All right, today I'm doing a product review, just a quick video on this King Bolin e diag scan tool. This is a dongle that will communicate with your iPhone or your Android device, whether it be a phone or a tablet. And it comes in this little carrying case here that's perfect to throw in your glove box. And uh, I'm going to hook this up to my car. I have a 2019 Toyota Corolla and I've already set this up. Now I'm going to tell you, it's very straightforward when you first set this up. You do have to download the eDiag app for this. And this is the plus, by the way, this is the eDiag plus. They come out with just their first version. Then they upgraded to this one here. And I've already played around with this, and it's a pretty powerful tool for the price point. I was really impressed with it, but I'm going to show you just what all you can access in your car. I mean, this, to me, can do almost what your more expensive high-dollar scanners can do. And for the record, when you get this, do not throw these instructions away because while you're setting this up to your vehicle, it's going to ask you for a serial number and activation code, and it's right there on front of the instructions. So do not throw that away. I just keep it with this in the event I need to set up a second car or anything like that. But this is it here. It comes with this cord. And I'm getting ready to go out here and set this up again and just briefly show you what all you can expect with this, what all you can get into with this, and how it will really aid you in diagnosing a problem with your car. And uh, then I'll come back after that and I'll tell you what my final thoughts are. All right, so I'm going to do a screen recording on this to help with this video and hopefully you can see this here. I'm hoping I can record this while I'm actually using the app. So let me find the app. Here it is right here. We're going to open that up. Let's go into all system. All right now, right here, you can choose your VIN or you can do a VIN scan, which it will do it automatically. So let's go ahead and uh, do a VIN scan here. Right, it's giving me a choice here. Toyota Corolla LE SE or XL year 2019. It's already check marked, so just hit confirm. All right. And I tell you, this this thing is pretty fast. It works off of Bluetooth. The dongle that uh, I've got plugged up to the car talks to my iPhone through Bluetooth. Now you can also use a tablet like a Apple tablet or Android. All right, this is uh, North America. Let's go into that. All right, with smart key without. This car does not have a smart key. And I'm just showing you some of the things you can do with this. All right, health report, system scan, system selection. Let's do a health report. All right, as you can see, it's scanning the ACC. entire. ABS, anti-lock braking system, VSE, vehicle stability, SRS, supplemental, and OT, occupant detection, no fault code. AC, air conditioning, no fault code. TPM. CM, combination meter, no fault. CC, charging control, not equipped. SR, sliding roof, not equipped. TD, theft deterrent, not equipped. RES, rem DDM, drop. FRC, front recognition camera, no fault code. LKA, lane keeping assist. LDA, lane departure alert, no fault code. So it has scanned the car and uh, this car has no fault codes, which I knew that before I ever hooked up to it. This is my car. This is a 2019 Toyota Corolla, and uh, it just ran through all these. It's doing no code whatsoever. Maintenance functions. All right, here are your maintenance functions, and uh, depending on the car, 
is going to determine what all it allows you to do, such as you can bleed brakes with this, BMS, box, brake, DDF, EGR, ETS, IMMO, injectors, oil. All right, health report, system scan, system selection. Let's go to that. Let's go to uh, powertrain, chassis, or body. Let's go to all systems. All right. This is actually picking up every computer inside of this. I'm gonna, let's go into air conditioning. Confirm. System scan. All right. Read, call, f read fault code. Clear fault memory. Read freeze frame. And this does have freeze frame capabilities if there was anything that said a uh, code but see here no freeze frame data confirm so that means it has not set a code read data stream but you can check all right evaporator target temp let's confirm that okay uh, evaporator target temp would be 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is I think like 41 or 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Magnetic clutch relay. Description, this test activates the magnetic clutch relay on off available commands and expected results. All right, let's uh, no monitoring data. All right, off. On. Let's go ahead and, and cut off again. Let's see if I can notice a difference in the temperature coming out of the vents. The compressor should not be running, and I do feel it warming up. I wish I could get on the hood and actually show you that it's disconnecting. Oh, it's definitely disconnecting. That's just barely cool air. Let's kick it back on. All right, we just re-engaged it. This is bi-directional functions that is really good considering the price point of this. This is what your bigger scanners will let you do. You can you can do all kind of things in here. All right, blower motor, confirm. No monitoring data. Blower speed is 11. All right, I just increased it to 12. Back to 11. So as you can see, you can control your blower motor. And all this just aids you in diagnostics. Heater, active level, defogger, relay, rear, magnetic clutch, air mix servo, special function. Let's see what this is. Servo motor initialized, refrigerant gas volume check. So this is actually going to tell you if you have the proper charge. Refrigerant gas volume check. Refrigerant gas volume check has completed the, the gas volume is normal. It says right here. So basically that is... Uh, more than likely using your, your pressure switches that's in the air conditioned system plus your thermistor reading the actual temperature to determine if it's at its right volume, which is very handy to have. Actuation test, uh, brake warning light. All right, right now it's off. Let me turn this on. Yep, my brake light just come on. You'll just have to trust me on that. You might be able to see it through this other camera. All right, let's turn it off. All right, it is off. More bi-directional functions here. ABS, solenoid, everything to do with your brakes. Stop, light, relay. It's giving you an idea, though, just what all you can do inside of this. It's, it covers everything. I think this is immobilized. Disclaimer, if you use or upgrade this software, blah, blah, blah. Confirm. All right, let's uh, go to Toyota. And put a switch on ignition. Now, see here, you can actually get a new key and you can uh, program it yourself. This is where you would start right here. Info, switch on ignition. Then it's going to tell you to put the other key. It's, it just walks you through it. So that's very cool.
All right, we've already looked at air conditioning. So take a look at that. Air conditioning is really my strength on most automotive, even though I was thinking earlier, I don't remember ever, ever having to bring a car to a shop to have it repaired. I've always repaired my own, even if I had to dive deep into things, I would always find a problem and fix it. And that's all this tool is. It's just something to get you into the system you're looking for. If you read a fault code, and let's say it's an O2 sensor, then if it's a downstream O2 sensor, it's given output that is totally irregular or out of range, it kind of tells you that's where to start. That don't mean you have a bad O2 sensor. It could be a stopped up catalytic converter giving it those readings, but it at least tells you where your problem is or where to go. It's not going to fix it for you. It's just intended to be a tool like any other tool. All right, so it tells you what is equipped on this car and that is basically it. That is a little different than what I did earlier where I was pulling up fault codes, which it had none, but it scans just to see what all is available in this car. I am actually reading the data stream on the engine itself. This has got your vehicle load, your mass airflow, intake air, atmospheric pressure, coolant temperature, engine speed, vehicle speed. All right, let's back up. Uh, manual select, throttle sensor position. You can look at all these different things on your car. You can just go one system at a time, fuel system, your sh short fuel trim, long fuel trim, EVAP, current fuel type. All of this is at your disposal to go in and look at it's going to take me a little while to get familiar just what all you can do. Vacuum pump here, purge cut, AF heater duty. I mean, look at this. You can get into all of these systems. There is such a ton of information in here. And I'm going to get out here and just play with this a lot to where I can get very familiar with it. That way, when the day comes, I actually need to use it, I'll have a better idea on how to navigate this. System selection, powertrain, let's go to powertrain, cruise engine and ECT. All right, confirm. Read data stream. Manual select. Oh, battery voltage. Here we go. All right, here we go battery voltage 13.6 all right so this is showing you your battery voltage which is also showing you that the alternator is putting out see i got 13.69 if i get into this a little bit let's see if it changes change a little bit but the alternator is definitely charging if you remember or follow this channel my last video was how to test an alternator well with this tool you can just get inside your car turn on the air conditioner pull this up and you'll know instantly if you are in fact charging so that's pretty handy to to have but it tells you all kind of things here you've got uh vehicle load let's let's do the math sensor here and by the way, if you don't uncheck the one prior, it'll still show up. There's your output for your mass sensor, your uh, mass airflow. Uncheck that, intake air, you can do that. 76 degrees Celsius, that's the temperature of it. Throttle sensor position, let's do that one. Okay, there it is in the middle. I'm just sitting here at idle. Let me get into my throttle a little bit. And there we go, it's reacting. Okay, go back. But as you can see, you can check on different things and then see exactly what it's putting out. Invaluable information for diagnosing problems. I mean, it's got all these different things that you can take a look at and on and on and on and on. I could literally spend all day out here and still wouldn't know everything. 
about this program. It's pretty in-depth. So I think you're getting a good idea just what all this this can do for the price point. I'm really impressed with it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And we are going to go ahead and disconnect this and I'll be right back with you. Well, pretty impressive, huh? I thought so. I mean, I have been looking at certain uh, scan tools, and I wouldn't mind having one at some point, but they're like $1,100 and up. Some are just under 1000 but they're really high dollar. This one here, right now, if you get it between now and August the 1st, you can get this same one for $99.93. That's $45 off of their original price. You really can't beat that. And I'm not trying to sell these. This is strictly a review video. But what I think after looking at this and seeing what all you can get into, it is definitely worth the price if you own a car and if you do your own work. If you're a do-it-yourselfer and work on your own vehicles to save that expensive shop fees and all that, then man, this is a must-have. But this is just another tool that you absolutely need in today's car world. I mean, everything is computer controlled and how are you to know what's really going on without one? Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching this video. And I'll have links in the description along with the code if you're interested in getting this particular scan tool. Thank you.